to another video. This is Motivation for Christians with Arizona. Welcome back. Welcome back. Today we're doing Bible study. We have Brother Gio back, um, my sidekick, Brother Jave with us. And today we have two new guests. We have my oldest brother, um, Roy, and then we have my cousin, um, Glendon. Just say hi to the, to the people. Hi, hey, everybody. What's up? Everybody. What's going on, man? And today we'll be diving into... John chapter 10, we did the uh, end and a half of John chapter 9 last week, so we're going to drive straight into John chapter 10. To begin, we're going to do a prayer of by my cousin, and the end and prayer will be by Brother Javi. Uh, Father, we thank you for today. God, we know that this is a day that you've made, and we will re rejoice and be glad. God, you also encourage us to study your word, so this is in accordance to your word. Oh, Father, I pray that your spirit will bring light and, inter and correct interpretation to the scriptures today that we can learn and not just be hearers of the word but duels also i pray you bless all those that will be listening i pray that they'll be inspired they'll be propelled oh god to move to another level in you in studying your word and understanding your heart in jesus name i pray amen amen well i said take it away oh. Gonna talk that. Yeah, right, John yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta make some ground rules, brother. Yeah, man. Cool. You right, John you a good shepherd in his sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and he, the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And the stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Um, so as just to start us off, start off our conversation, these first five verses, talking about sheep and shepherd, what, what's going on right here? Um, to me, they trying to, they, to me, uh, I don't know exactly they talk, if they just really talking about sheep and shepherds or they trying to use it as an example for something else. Because what I comprehend is that, um, that if you try to take an easier route through life, you're not gonna make it. But if you kind of follow it the way God wants you to follow it, and you stay with Him, He's gonna guide you through. That's what I got. Okay. So, and so I think a couple chapters ago we said um, Jesus often speaks literally, but He also speaks uh, figuratively, right? So when we talk about sheep, who, who is He talking? About? Who is He really talking? About? Us. I think his followers. Followers, right? Us. And the shepherd, obviously, a Jesus. Mm -hmm. One of the best best things I love about this text here, it says, uh, he goeth before them. Right? And that's the type of uh, God we serve. Uh, a, a, a leader, a servant leader, that he goes before and he clears the dangers and the obstacles before, uh, before we go behind him. The most important thing is that we stay behind him, that we don't get in front of him. And we don't think we're so puffed up and start walking next to him, but we stay in line with him. All right? I think a couple of weeks ago, uh, as you asked us, uh, what's a servant leader? You want to revisit that real quick? What, what do you think a servant leader is? A servant leader is a person that lead but serve at the same time because every single leader have to serve, um, especially with spiritual leaders because um, you're like a perfect example, a pastor. A pastor lead the congregation, but he's also serving God at the same time. Like he can't just he can't do one role. You have to you got to do both. All right. Okay. Good. And it's not just about. Serving God. It, serving God doesn't make you a servant leader per se, right? Um, but it's your tight, it's how you lead who God has entrusted you with. Right? 
A servant leader is one that leads by example, ones that put the cares of his sheep for himself, right? One that goes out of his way to make sure uh, as you're good, you're good, uh, I'm good um, before himself. Cool. G, anything else you want to say about those first, first five verses? Or you did? Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, verse three it says, "To him the porter opened, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out." <clears throat> Literally, man, what happens in the Bible is what happens on earth. Like it's not by chance that God said, "When the shepherd calls." The sheep hear his voice and they come. So you saw how people <clears throat> were trying to attempt to call the sheep of the shepherd. And the sheep was minding their business, still eating grass. But when they heard that call, you see the head look up, the air start perking, and they start making their way towards the shepherd. And that's exactly what Jesus is saying. All right? So my question to everybody here is whose voice is, whose voice are you listening to? Whose voice are you allowing to guide you? day in and day out is it the voice of your flesh is it the voice of the enemy of uh, the enemies is it the voice of <clears throat> you know unwise and foolish friends that give you bad advice um or is it the voice of the shepherd jesus yeah. exactly i think um just to piggyback off that Long time ago when I first read this text, um, it's a really long time ago when I first started preaching, um, there are four voices that we always have to contend with. Our voice, the voice of others, the devil's voice, and God's voice. Four voices we, we have constantly in our head have to try to decipher. Uh, who is it that's really speaking, right? And I think this text, even right here, speaks to the importance of relationship, right? The more you know God, the more you spend time with God, the more sensitive to that voice you become, right? And the example that I use is, um, Ezra, if you, if you have a party, right, a crowd of people, a bunch of people, but um, Glendon calls your name, you have a relationship with him, so you're used to that sound, right? So even no matter how loud it is, because you have that relationship with your cousin or even your brother, you're going to recognize who's calling, right? Or the same is for your mom, right? No matter how much noise it is, no matter what's going on, right? You're going to recognize that voice because you have a relationship with your voice. And so the same in this text, um, the more we cultivate and we build our relationship with Christ, the more responsive, the more alert we become when he speaks, because we know he often speaks, as they say, you know, in a still, small voice, right? And so this, this is why a relationship becomes important. And as we saw in the video, the sheep, they have a relationship with the shepherd, right? That's who they're with day in, day out. That's who they spend their time with. And because of that, when he calls, they respond because they know his voice, right? So um, that's my, just my little tidbit. Anyone, anyone else want to add anything before we continue? I'm going to say I listen to the voice of myself. And God, because I have um particular particular stuff that I need to do each and every single day, and sometimes I'll be lazy on it, so I gotta keep telling myself, no, do this, do that, and then through the day, God always put His input in pretty much anything I do, so I make sure that I'm listening to Him also. Yeah, now you have to. I, it, it becomes tricky sometimes with with your voice and God's voice. Reason being, let's say you're doing something you want to do, right? As you want to go get a car. Right? And you're going to swear to yourself, or you're going to say to yourself, no, nah, that was God. God told me to get that car. I, I know God told me to get that car. Right? But sometimes it really don't be God. Right? It, it, you, you get so confused sometimes because you want what you want. Right? And you have to be able to, to even in the midst of that, I tell people, be careful when you're, when you're, you're going for certain things because you may very well think it's God speaking to you in it. God ain't say anything. God told you get the Honda. You want to get the BMW, right? You go ahead and get the BMW, right? Ten months down the line, you can't afford the payments. Yo, Ezra, 
Javay is telling you about his testimony. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. <laughs> My, you might use the last part about not being able to afford it. <laughs> He's like, yo, I, I, I gotta get this BMW. Man. I get this. I, that's my next car. I want a BMW. That's my next car. But, if we can chip in, um, I, I think I want to piggyback off the the comment that was made by um, Mr. Ellis. So, um, one of the most difficult things for us to um, for Christians to do, especially young Christians, is to um, is to know that voice. Um, as you mentioned, indeed, we have a challenge in hearing. Me, you hear so many voices, and, and to know what exactly to um, to listen to. Um, <coughs> You know, and, and that question is often uh, asked to us, like, hey, how do we know what is God's voice Vo- versus the voice of our own ambitions or our own um, cries? Um, and that was leading to, us, to, to the scriptures in that God would never actually tell us to do something that is not aligned to his scripture, to the word. So it's a good way to, to, to start to identify what is God's voice because he's never going to tell you to do something that he doesn't... Um, supports in his word right, right. and um and and even in that you know um you can hear something that that's aligned in god's word and yet god isn't speaking to you directly because there are seasons and there are times and there are different things for different persons so indeed to the point that was made about relationship is really important because as was played in the video i think that's that was, that was a perfect demonstration you know, the shepherds hear, or, or the sheep hear the voice of the shepherd. They know his voice. So regardless of who is saying the same thing, you know, you can be shouting this, shouting my name, but I do not recognize that voice because we have that relationship. So, yeah, indeed. Um, let's just, I, I guess we can start by telling people, hey, look to the word of God. If it doesn't end up in the word of God, immediately dis- dismiss it. Right, right. First Absolutely. Five says, first, the verse five says, uh, the stranger they will not follow but they will flee. So just like you said, dismiss it right away and don't even take heed to that word. <clears throat> Absolutely. All right, cool. Uh, verse six picks up, it says, uh, this parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am I am the door of the sheep. And Ezra, just pay attention to any time Jesus says, verily, verily, that's something you need to, to pay attention to, right? He's, he's about to say something really important. He says, so he says, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. This is our favorite, one of our favorite uh, scriptures to quote, right? The thief cometh not but for to kill, steal and to kill and to destroy. But I come that they might have life, that they might have it more abundantly. Let's stop right there real quick and, and talk about that. Anyone want to share? So I think what um, the last few verses are saying is just, being able to understand um, the difference between the leader and almost the wannabe leader. Um, and the true leader cares in terms of like your well being and making sure that going forward you have everything that you need. And the wannabe leader who's kind of compared to the thief, um, they just want to take what they, what you have um, and kind of use you and then go about their business and just leave you empty. Right. Love that. Well, what what I gather from this is just what is the loud, um, the loudest in this particular paragraph or this scriptures that we read is beware of deception, um, because it, it's 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 a reality. Um, devils, I think, one of his major weapon, if it's not his main weapon, is to deceive. Yes, he's gonna bring some that's Christ-like. And and make you think it is Christ um, yeah. to deceive you. So I think what is shouting out here in this paragraph is to be mindful of. Absolutely. 
as you could. Anything you want to add? Yeah, I want to add that a lot of people in life are just a lot of people in life like one sided relationships. By that I mean relationships that they only get benefit from. And as soon as they benefit, as soon as they go with they benefit, buy it. And with a relationship with God, you cannot have a you can't have a relationship like that. It's not going to work. You got to put your part in and God got to, well, God going to put his part in regardless, but you got to put your part in too, just like a marriage. Um, If if Gio don't come with his 50 and Sister Shai don't come with their 50, they not going to work. Hold right. on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to come with 100, my brother. No, 50 plus 50 equals, no, no. <laughs> You come as a whole. Come as a whole. That's the problem. Y'all little young whippersnappers out here coming with fifty, and then things go willy nilly, right? All right, all right, all right. Let me rephrase that. that whippersnappers. <laughs> all right, let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. And Jill got to come with his hundred percent. Hold on, hold on. Jill got to come with his hundred percent. So the show got to come with their hundred percent. And it's going to work well. The Javi got to come with his 100%. And Sister Melissa got to come with, their 100%, with her 100%. They're going to be good. Each party needs to put in their percentage in order to make a relationship work. Absolutely. Um, I like the fact that Jesus refers to himself as the door. And the only way to get in is through him. Yes. Right? Um, as it was mentioned... There's many people out there trying to deceive us. And there's many things that's out there that we allow ourselves to be deceived by. But the only true way to get in is through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. um, and by end, we mean heaven, right? By end, we mean into that relationship, into that covenant, um, accepting and receiving him as our Lord and Savior. Um, there's so many other uh, so uh, from a principle stance, right, I think that he was addressing um, the law, the law that they were following, like the Mosaic law, like that turned into like 600 something plus laws. Right. And it was like, it's not it's not the law that's going to get you in. It's not following that law or it's not what these other Pharisees and Sadducees are, are, are deceiving you to believe. And like, if you do this and you do that, almost like it's a checklist to get you into heaven. That's not going to get you there. It's by faith in me that's going to get you into into heaven. Yeah. Um, one last thing. Um, so people who believe in other gods, I think this verse, verse 9, also speaks out in terms of Jesus being the door, right? People feel like all these other gods are, are, are going to get them into heaven, or if you go sacrifice and kill yourself, you know, you're going to be in heaven with a thousand virgins or something like that. It's just, there's all types of different beliefs out there. <laughs> the really one and only true God is Jesus. And the only way to get into heaven with, with, with him is through him. Absolutely. Give me a sec. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I love the, the other part of verse 9, too, that um, he says, him being the door, they will come and go freely, and in him they will find good passion. That's, that's the God we serve, right? In him he will provide, right? We will have a land with green grass, and, or he'll, to make it more, make sense in our times, he will provide to make sure our pantry is full, right? He'll provide to make sure that we have enough to get by day by day, um, we will find good pasture in him. And that's just the God we serve, right? Um, Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides and makes a way. And we pick up now at verse 11. And it says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is heroin and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The heroine fleeth, because he is an heroine, and careth not for the sheep. Again, he says, I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, 
and I am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. A lot was said just now. Yeah. But again, we, we, we look at the character and the, and the nature of God and, and how he is defined as a good shepherd. Uh, he is so good that he will lay down his life for his sheep. Um, the song says, and this was not in, in the context, but it just came to me, um, that he will leave the 99 and, and go after the one, right? That just speaks to the nature and the character of, of, of Jesus, God being the good shepherd, right? That even though there's one all the way over there lost, can't find their way, caught up in, in what's going on in the world, he will, leave, he will leave us, you and I, and go after the one. He's a good shepherd. I mean, and we've seen uh, so many examples in our lives, right, of him being a good shepherd. Uh, I, I can look at one right now. I was able to pay my rent two days ago. I was able to pay my bill yesterday. Uh, he's a good shepherd, right? He provides. He makes a way. He opens doors. He closes doors. That's a blessing as well, closing doors, right? Uh, that's a good shepherd. Good shepherd. And it says... He giveth his life for his sheep. What did he do ultimately? He went on that cross and he paid the consequence of sin for you and I. Right? That's a good sheep. What more? I, I'm just stuck on that verse 11. He is the good sheep. All right, that's it. What more do you want from me? Uh, uh... The the first the first part which you were which you had remind me of John three sixteen and seventeen, and one thing that pointed out to me uh, is the part where he mentioned that if he see a wolf come in, he won't depart from his sheep, but stay there to make sure that the wolf don't attack them. Mm-hmm. God, God, and Jesus are different. They different. And I'm going to also relate this to uh, life too. You have people that will see you in trouble and be there for you. And then you got them others that will see you, be help and act like they don't see it. But thank God that God and Jesus is so merciful and so amazing that they, they never leave us. The Bible said that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And I'm just really thankful for that. That's, that's my part. Hey, Ezra, I, I, like, what do you mean by God and Jesus are, 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 are two different people? Kind of got me there. No, I didn't, I didn't say there was two different people. I know, I know they're the same as one body, but I was just... I was just oh, like, got it, man. I, <laughs> yeah. I got you, man. Like, they're on a whole different level. Like, the fact that they would sacrifice their lives for us. Yeah. That's what you mean? It's that, that young terminology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got you to get a dictionary, bro. It's hard to keep up. <laughs> that urban, that urban talk, man. <laughs> um, I, I like the relationship aspect. 14, he says, um, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and I and am known and am known of mine. God knows us. And we know God and that relationship, uh, because we have that relationship, it comes with those benefits of being protected by the shepherd. It comes with those relationships. It comes with what comes with the relationship is being protected, um, being provided for, being covered. Right. Um, and like, like Jay said, that song, when you, you leave, he leaves the 99 to go after the one. So in any event, I find myself lost in a dark place, not knowing if I'm coming or going, all I have to do is look up. Just look up. Yeah. And know exactly where my help is coming from. Know yeah. exactly what's going, who's going to come after me and bring me back inside the gate. I don't know if you saw the sheep in the gate, but they, there was a gate around them. And they were in green pastures, just minding their business. They didn't have a, a care at yeah. all in the world. They heard that they heard the shepherd come over. Oh, 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 okay. What's up? Everything good? 
All right. And then he turned around and just kind of left, went, went back to their business. And, and, and that's what it has to be like. Yeah. Love it. And I heard this, I think, last night. Uh, Gio from Uncle Jake's. Um, it's not just us knowing God, us having a relationship with him, but it's also him knowing us. And we give him, giving him access to know us. Not that he, he knows everything, but I'm, I'm saying really getting to know us. Um, the scripture says, um, I, I can't remember the beginning of him, but he said, depart from me. Um, I knew you not, not that you didn't know me. But I knew you not, right? And so it's, it's, it's important that, God knows us. He knows our struggles. He knows what we're going through. And that's the type of shepherd uh, he is. And just speaking to the nature and the character of, of God, um, and he cares, right? Um, he cares when we're going through. He cares when things are rough. He cares in the good times and he cares in the bad times. That's the type of shepherd we have, right? And speaking to the, the, the context of the scripture, um, my study Bible was saying, um, back in those days, you had uh, communal flocks, uh, meaning that um, the flock was owned by several people. And it, it's saying pretty much they were hired hands, uh, meaning that they were there for the money. They were there for a paycheck. And it says any time um, that predators or wolves attack, uh, they would flee because they were hired. Um, but thank God we have a good shepherd that's committed Right? That he is, he's not in this for, for money. He's not in this um, for any monetary benefit. But he's committed to us no matter what's going on. That's good. Right? Um, no matter what's happening, he's committed to us. And there, there is not much, uh, I would think, any, any history or, or Greek to dive into and really unpack. This is, this is really just... Basically. We can stay on the surface and get so much from it. For me, it's that he's a good shepherd. That's, that could be a whole message right there. I might change my topic for tomorrow. Like, he's a good shepherd. <laughs> a good shepherd. Right? Um, and so let that be an encouragement, not just to the people that will listen, but for us this morning. And anytime we, we start to worry, we start to look around, and we don't uh, see, understand what's going on. Know that God is committed. He is still a good shepherd. All right. We pick up at 16. And it says, And the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Mm -hmm. Therefore doth my father love me, because I laid down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down for my of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment I have received of my father. And that, that finishes that portion of, of Jesus speaking. And there it touches at 16, I believe. Um, as we spoke about it earlier, he, him leaving the 99 and going after the one. It's the same thing it said in 16. And those that are not of this fold, uh, them also I must bring. So those that aren't yet saved, um, he's going after them. Right? He's impressing on their heart their need for him. Right? He's looking there to change and transform their lives. Um, anyone want to chip in and add to that? I think he's just like reassuring his um, commitment to his people. Absolutely. Do you good? Look, are you about to say something crazy? Yeah, no, I just <laughs> like. <clears throat> It's just like you you read 
the entire Old Testament and how aggressive God was in regards to going after his people. And like, imagine if there was no New Testament. What would we be talking about right now? Imagine if he didn't lay down his life and take it back up again. Imagine if he didn't open up the door to allow us an opportunity to get in. What would we be talking about? It's just... And pe people get so caught up like, oh, the Jewish people this, the Jewish people that. I, I, as far as I'm concerned, those people are my brothers and sisters, as long as they accept Christ, right? Um, I'm just, I'm just like utterly grateful for the grace of God, for the New Testament, for the blood, for the cross, and and this this is definitely a reassuring thing. It's it's the Good Shepherd. Like, the, I, you can't find characteristics like this on Earth. Yeah. So. Has anything? I'm, yeah, I'm basically on the same thing Jill is on. Because sometimes, it hit me um, in the day, like, like, God, really, he amazing. Like, 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 don't you just have that time where you just like it just hits you? You just sit down there, you like, you realize like how merciful, how wonderful God is. Like, and anytime I drive into the scripture, it just be just be reminding me. So I make sure I give my my um, I make sure I do my part. I, I say thank you. Um, make sure that I use my gifts and my talent. Uh, because. I can't let them go to waste. I'm not. I'm trying to be able to leave this earth and know that, like every single thing that I said I was gonna do, and all the potential that God had for me, I was able to complete it. Yeah, that's my thing. Cool. Right, that was good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I think everyone touched touched on on the main points here. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. Javi. Yes, sir. So you was about to cry for a second. Yo, I promise. Yeah. Yo, I felt it, and I and I had to, I had to, had to catch myself because it's just like I I can't explain it, bro. It's like like you decided to do this even before I was born, knowing that I would be in the streets half my life knowing that I would be doing whatever I was doing before I decided to say yes, like, and you still did it anyway. Like, it's, it's just, it hits me hard every time, bro. And then to wake up in the morning and, and just decide to not acknowledge him and just get up and just go and run and run and run and run and, and, and not to take time and be like, hey, God, how are you? You know, like, what did you have for me today? Like, like, was I supposed to go out and, and, and talk to somebody and share your gospel? And, you know, was it your intent for me to be used? But instead, it's just like, I, it's like, it's like Javay said, it, it, it's not how much of God we have, it's how much of God has us. How much are we allowing ourselves to be consumed by God? And, and and this just it just it like it just it hits me every time it takes me out every time I think about what I was doing before I say yes to Christ and 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 his decision to be my good shepherd in spite of those decisions and I just pray that we all continue to grow with the intent to just just become more and more intimate with Christ 
right? So that that voice is no more that small, still voice, but in fact, it's actually a loud, audible voice that we feel each and every step of the way because we acknowledge him in all of our ways and allow him to direct our paths. It's just, like, I, I want to be able to speak to him on the top of Mount Sinai. I want to be able to speak to him through the burning bush. I want to be able to speak to him and, and, and get visions and dreams and, and just have that one-on-one -on -one conversation. I want to come out of a, an encounter with him with a broken hip bone. And, and I, now I'm walking with a limp. I want my face to shine. I want to look different. I want people to see the glory of God flowing through me and out of me so that they have no other choice but to ask me, why do you look so, like, why do you look the way you look? And all I have to say is Jesus. Yeah. And just that alone would cause them to say, I want to serve that same God because I want that same experience. I'm tired of living life on my own, by myself, trying to figure out my, my way by myself. I'm tired of the people I'm hanging out with. I want to just be changed. I want to be made new. Like that, that's the stuff that it just takes me out every time because I, I want Jesus for everybody else. Like, I don't want to accept the fact that the Bible says not all will answer the call. Not everybody will make it into heaven. Not everybody who says, Lord, Lord, will get inside the gates of heaven. And that just drives me crazy because I want everybody to make it in. But it's just it's not so like, like, how could you just pass up on something like this? Like he, he says, I'm allow you to go in and out as you please. Like I'm gonna provide for you. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be your shepherd. Yeah. And when you were speaking on that yesterday, when that news got broke about um Trump and his wife getting the virus, when I found that out, part of me was like, yeah. But then, I, yo, but I, then, I, I think I think that hit. I think that hit most people instinctively, just for human nature. We just like, oh, you're yeah. good for him. Like, you know, but yeah. then Uncle Jake's. Yeah, thing. that's, I, I saw his post because, like, I, cause I went straight on Instagram. I saw his post. And then right after, I went, I went straight into praying, praying for him and his wife. I needed that because I was not about to do that. That's what it's about, bro. It's, that's what it's about. It's, it's about. And that, I think that is indicative of how much of God, like not how much Jake has God, but how much God has Jake. Like how much of God does he have? Like it's just, I don't think anybody else said anything like, oh, let's pray for him. Let's pray for him. Like these are some tough times. I don't, I don't think I see anybody else post that. Aside from the politics, let's put that aside. At the end of the day, Trump is a human being. Absolutely. Made by God, him and his wife. The fact that he wants to be ignorant and do and say whatever else, let us intercede for him because we have no idea how God can meet that man at his bedside tonight. Yeah. Change him. Wash him, make him new, give him another term in presidency and change the world. And that could all come by us who believe in Christ and intercede on his behalf. Instead of, instead of looking and smiling and sitting at the edge of our seats and anticipating his downfall. They're talking about the man may, this, this may cause him to, to, be susceptible to other diseases and illnesses because of his age. What's our position as, as Christians? What are we doing? What stance are we taking? We got to pray because just like how God and Jesus, okay, God, stay with us through every single thing. And even in the Old Testament, when, older, when the children of Israel, with them being hot and cold, God never loved them. He was staying with them all the way. We got to stay with each other. We may, we may not support every single thing each other say, which is understandable. Nobody's going to support every single thing somebody say. It's not, that, that's, that's just not possible. I mean, with God, it's possible, but with this world, it's not possible. But we just still gotta love each other and support each other. And I made sure I said that prayer for him. I'm gonna I'm gonna do another prayer for him today. I don't support like saying stuff that he's doing, saying stuff that he say. But I know at the end of the day, he a human being. We all people are God. 
And God was with me when I was over here doing them dumb stuff I was doing. So I can't, I can't, I can't be a hypocrite, act like I didn't have my time. And that's, a, I feel like a lot of people be doing that. Like we all had our time. You can't be a hypocrite because everybody had their time where they was wilding out doing some of the most stupidity stuff that you ever done in your life. But now when you good and you see somebody else doing that, it's not a time to like, um, glorify what they doing. It's time to understand, like, you know what? I went, I went through a similar situation. Let me pray for that person. If I could talk to them, help them. Absolutely. Um, just to, to, to bring that back to the, the text, um, 16, he says, and the other sheep I have, which are not of this soul, them also I must bring. And so, uh, we got to put aside the politics, right? And that, that's another sheep that we should be praying to be in our fold, right? And I'm going to leave that there, but we have to always constantly check the posture of our heart, right? Everybody needs praise, and he needs our praise as well. And Gio, I know you're, you're, you're long past this, but man, I was going to add it for you. Every time I think about the goodness of Jesus, hey. hallelujah, and all that he's done for Oh, come on, preacher. My soul. Come on, preacher. <laughs> Yo, they do that. The whole church erupt. <laughs> you already know, man. And we can check with other things after. Um, 19, it says, There was a division, therefore, again, among the Jews for these saints. And many of them said, He hath a devil and is, and is mad. Why hear ye him? Others said, there, these are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can the devil open the eyes of the blind? And just the, the ending verses we just see, I'm a division, right? Some believe, some don't believe. The Pharisees, again, are, are condemning what he's saying. Uh, is he God? Is he this? Is he that? Other people are saying, can the devil open the eyes of a blind man? You've seen him do so much. So many miracles in the past couple chapters, yet you still don't believe he is the Messiah. Right? Why are you still doubting? So that, that's where it ends. It ends uh, with, with them doubting um, the Jews, Pharisees, questioning, is he who he says he is? Is he a devil? Right? Um, and that's where we end today um, with our study. And the 19 through 21 there, if anyone else want to add anything else, so there wasn't really much, too much there. And if any, anyone else want to add to it, but They're doing the same thing they did in the earlier times. I just think that it's, it's the position of their heart. What can yeah. they it's so hardened by their own culture and what they're used to that they're not willing to <coughs> Like they've been blinded by so many years, so many generations, that now that the truth is right before their eyes, that they can touch it, it's tangible. Like they can feel it, smell it, taste it. All five of their senses can, uh, it can be, they can experience it through all five of their senses. They're just, their heart is so cold and hardened towards the truth. Mm -hmm. I just pray that we never become numb to our sin, numb to uh, the word of God, numb to his voice. I just pray that we're always sensitive and ready to hear and receive what thus saith the Lord. Yeah. yeah. Leave that everybody to and to. Uh, <clears throat> Jeffrey, you doing that in the prayer, then I'll do my close out. Are you done? You have nothing else? Mm-mm. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, so anyone else that, that's listening, one of you guys watch this video. Today. From, from, from me, I, I just want to encourage you and let you know that uh, God is a good shepherd. He will take care. It's, his word says all your needs will be supplied according to his riches and glory. And serving God is not necessarily, necessarily about uh, his hand. And what I mean by that, by him doing and providing and, and making the way, but 
that serving God, you just get the assurance that even if I don't see his hand in him providing, that he's still a good shepherd. That he's going to be with me in the thick and he's going to be with me in the thin. He is a good shepherd. He's going to look out for you. He's going to look out for us. He's going to make sure um, that everything um, is taken care of. Cast their cares on him for he cares for us. Uh, this, this to me was just an encouragement. Just a reminder that God is indeed um, a good shepherd. And I, I'm stuck right there. I'm stuck right there. He is a good shepherd. So I hope that you're, I pray that you're encouraged by this, and that God speaks, speaks to you and you're able to hear his voice. That's, that's my closing statement. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you. We glorify you and we honor you. We thank you so much, God, for another day that you have allowed us to see. Mm -hmm. uh, we praise you, we honor you, because you are a good shepherd. Uh, thank you, God, this morning for the opportunity to gather again on Zoom and to study your word. We take not this opportunity for granted. We thank you, God, so much for our brothers joining us, oh God, Glenda and Royden. We pray, God, that you will continue to bless Ezra and bless his channel and bless uh, this ministry that you have given. Pray, God, that you, oh God, will continue to cover him with your blood in the name of Jesus. I pray. God, I thank you so much for being a good shepherd. Uh, the word says, a thief cometh to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, but you come that we might have life and, and life more eternal. And so we thank you for that, God. We bless you. We honor you. We thank you. I pray that your word will continue to guide us. And I pray, God, that we, you will have so much of us. And every time you speak, we will recognize that it's the good shepherd speaking. Have your way in our lives, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 This is it for the video. We was able to wrap up another Bible study. This is so powerful. This is coming together as brothers each and every week to just discuss God's word. Thank you so much to my brother and my cousin for coming along this journey with us. And don't forget to like the video, share, um, subscribe if you're new, and turn on your post notification. This is Motivation for Christians with Elton. I'm out.